Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Diana Ospina, and I'll be your host for today. Today's topic is five tips for better SAP license management, presented by Selva Kumar. Selva Kumar is an SAP GRC expert with 20 years of SAP license management and SAP GRC implementation experience. He is also a partner of Audibot, which is an organization that helps companies lower their SAP license costs by monitoring their SAP license usage. Now, without any further ado, I will now pass this over to Silva to begin the webinar. Everybody able to see my screen? Diana, are you able to see the screen? Yes. So let me start. Uh, so as Diana told, we are I'm partner with a company called Audit Bots. So let me start with the. So why we need to do uh, license optimization? Uh, one of the key things we found in most of the clients is we were able to save them at least 10 to 45 percent on the license count. Uh, we can also harvest unused licenses, which basically means people who are not using the system to the fullest potential. Uh, we also save time by automating the classification, user license classification. And one more key area is SAP does not provide with the clear guidelines on what transactions are mapped to what license types. So it is very tough for customers to exactly figure out what license type needs to be assigned to what users. And it's also a very good uh, negotiation point uh, for you to understand the usage. So when the contract with the SAP is getting over or uh, you are trying to buy additional licenses for additional tools like HANA or GRC, any other software, uh, SAP is very open to listening to your concerns on the license count. So that's a better you are you are better position to negotiate better with SAP. And finally, you also assign license types based on activity. You just don't assign license assign license types based on guesswork. Right? Assign based on activity. So here is a license model for most of software. The one license model is concurrent license type, which basically means you buy licenses for 100 users. And if you can create 1,000 users, but when 100 user logs in, you, the system will not let you log on any additional users. So that is called concurrent license type. Named user license type is basically what SAP follows. For each and every license type is counted based on a user ID. As long as the user ID is unique across your landscape, you are counted once. So this gives the flexibility of creating additional ID without going and modifying your contract. But the downside is if you are not aware of your license count, you could uh, go over your license count. Right? That is when a lot of customers face into issues. So I'm going to start with the tip one. So first thing, what we would we will suggest plans is uh, identify inconsistent uh, uh, user IDs, which basically means user IDs not following the naming convention, uh, user IDs with test, all this kind of user IDs. Just make sure you identify user IDs which are not uh, aligning with your naming convention of your company. Assign proper user groups. So we always advise clients to have a proper user group, like for example, the end user finance, the end user HR, or it can also have a location notifications, right? For example, South America, North America, Europe, and also it needs to have the functional team, basis security like that. We always advise the customers to populate email address and phone number. Right? This will be very useful for, for identifying unique users or duplicate users. 
So if the same email ID is used in two different people, uh, it could be a duplicate ID. Okay. Tip number two, lot users for inactivity. So all the companies which are running SAP should have a policy on user inactivity. It could be 90 days or it could be 180 days. So periodically users have to be uh, reviewed and see whether they are not logging in for 90 days and then lock them for inactivity. Lock can also expire. Assign a special user group and remove all the roles. That means basically you put them in a user group called expired or locked and then uh, make sure you remove all the roles from them so that they can get reprovisioned if they come back. Assign a dummy license type, which means uh, these users should be assigned to license type called 99, which is basically a dummy license type. Uh, so once they are locked, expired, you assign a dummy license type. Tip number three, activate the right license type in USMM. So SAP has a tool called USMM, which lets you submit your license to SAP. So what you need to do is you need to look at your contract and assign the right license type uh, in the in the US amount. Okay. So if you are only purchase professional limited professional employee license type, you just assign those license type in the US amount. And then you also make sure the license type numbers because SAP has multiple numbers for the same license type. You want to make sure you are assigning the right number of the license type. Assign license type to all users, so you never want to leave the user blank. Uh, if you leave the user blank, SAP will automatically assume that you are assigning a highest license type. So you don't want to assign a blank license type to the users. Uh, always assign a dummy license type to the test users, uh, provided there are not really too many test users, right? So you can have some limited number of test users and assign a 99 license type, so that a dummy license type which will uh, exclude the license type count. Yeah, sorry, this users will be excluded from the license type count. Uh, so tip uh, number four, monitor your ABAP developers. Right? These are the very highly priced license types, ABAP developers. Okay? So what you need to do here is you need to look at your service marketplace and look at your registered ABAP developers and also compare the above developers created in your system. So this could be done from a table called dev access table. You can see the number of above developers registered in that table. So you can also refer to a step-by-step -step guide which guides you through how to check that. So you need to have, make sure the numbers are matching between your service marketplace and the above developers in your system. Now this is the next one is identify your basis security and configuration users properly, right? If your company has five security users, security developers under 10 basis users, you need to make sure only 10 people are basis and five people are, people are security. Right? And then make sure you properly assign them access and also assign a proper user group. <coughs> Do not allow any multiple logons, right? This is could this could be a, a license violation. Uh, this could uh, they could get a lot of clients. We have seen multi lot of clients in Asia Pacific region who have been charged with high license rights. Right? So some of the tools provided by SAP uh, are basically the transaction called license attributes uh, which basically will help you assign a license type assign a license type to the uh, roles okay. it will help you assign a license type to the roles so at least this will help you uh, to assign a professional license type to a security role or basis role or configuration role and then when you run the USMM SAP will suggest you a license type based on the role assignment then there is one more transaction called PRGN compressed times. 
which will remove all the duplicate and expired roles from the user. Right? This is an automated report which can remove the duplicate and expired users from the uh, roles from the users. Okay? Uh, you, this is also will reduce your compliance issues. The uh, last one is uh, make sure you review your RFC connection. Right? So SAP is now heavily coming after customers for non-SAP access. So SAP's argument is the data is in SAP system. So if you are accessing that SAP system through a, a custom application or other out of the box application, you still have it liable for paying license. Okay? For example, if you have salesforce.com and the sales guy is connected to SAP to RFC connection and he's checking the orders, he's checking the customers, he's updating the customers. That means uh, through Salesforce, he is indirectly uh, accessing SAP, right? So that what the SAP basically tells you is you have to so buy licenses for that kind of users who are accessing SAP from outside system. As if the okay. thanks for listening. So we have a step-by-step -step, uh, SAP license optimization guide, which can be used uh, at your customer site or at your uh, company. Please let me know if you have any questions. Diana. Diana? Hello. Hi, Silva. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for the. Thank you for your time. And there's also a handout that you can um, download here. It's the step-by-step -step license and risk management guide. Uh, this uh, handout was provided by Silva. You can download it. It's listed here for you. And I see we do have some questions. Okay. One second. So, so we have one question. Okay, so we have a question here from Holly. She says, why would you reclassify inactive users after 90 days instead of deleting these users? No, okay. So when you delete the user, you basically will lose the trace or log, right? So uh, it's always advisable not to delete the users. It's better to lock them, expire them, and remove the roles, so that you have a record of you know the traceability and audit log is uh, maintained. Right? So we should usually recommend them to lock inactivate. Okay, I have a question here from um, Amjad. Amjad uh, asks, okay, my company already has SAP R. ERP license on SQL DB, and they are moving to HANA DB. Uh, will SAP charge for this HANA DB access? Yes, yeah, yes. Sir. The HANA database is complete license is completely different. Uh, it's based on uh, storage, right? It's uh, half a GB. Sorry, uh, 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 it's uh, based on how many gigabytes of uh, RAM you are going to purchase, right? It's uh, one terabyte, half terabyte, like that. So. Uh, the database license will be for HANA will be separate, and you have to pay for it. Okay, we have another question here. Um, do we have to pay for an SAP license when a third-party system like Salesforce is accessing SAP? Yeah, the answer is yes, because uh, what SAP says is the data in SAP is now transformed, uh, right? Transformed by SAP. It applied all the rules and the data is there. So when you are logging in through Salesforce and you are accessing the, uh, the data, you have to pay for the license. Uh, only thing you hear is uh, if your user ID is uh, if your user ID is already existing in SAP and you have extra, you also have the same ID in Salesforce, then you don't have to pay. Uh, but if the user ID is not in SAP but it's only in Salesforce, then you have to pay. Okay, thank you. We have another question here from Holly. 
Can you explain again what SAP looks for when a license type is blank? Okay, so when the license type is blank, uh, you don't append anything. So what SAP does is it automatically promotes it and considered as a professional highest license type. Right. So that is why we tell customers you need to assign a license type like a professional limited professional employee, so that uh, SAP basically rightly classifies. If you leave it blank, it will make it the highest license type. Okay, we have another question here from C Sri Harsha. Will the T code PRGN compress TI delete the users that we have locked for the 90 days of inactivity? No, it will basically remove the row, remove this, this uh, program uh, will basically remove the expired roles and duplicate roles. It's not going to remove uh, active roles. Right? It's not going to touch the user or it's not going to touch the roles which are active. It's going to just basically basically going to look at expired roles and duplicate roles and remove them. Right. But but always you have to try to sandbox the development box before you try it in production. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Oh, I have another one here. How does SAP determine the right level of SAP license consumed by the customer? So, uh, for example, there is a report called USMM report. Okay which you have to run yearly and then you have to submit to SAP. So that USMM report, what it will do is, it will look for uh, all the users, what kind of courses they have made in, for example, how many customers they have created, how many vendors they have created, how many development objects they have created, uh, and then what are the RFC connections coming in. If there are users who have worked more than eight hours per day, right? So that will, if, let's say, for example, there is a user who is working 20, let's say 22 hours a day. That means that user is a, some user which is uh, accessing data from SAP. So all the information they get is from USMM. It gives, you, gives them a detailed information of all your activity. Okay, thank you. And then we have another question here from Sri Harsha. Are there any programs to automate the 90-day inactivity rule? Uh, I don't think SAP has it, but we have a tool. Uh, which can automate daily, it can run daily and then send a notification and also remove roles. I don't think SAP has it, but we have it. Yeah. Okay, does anyone have any other questions? Okay, I see one more come through. It says, how does SAP access impact the SAP license count? Sorry. It says, repeat again? sure, how does SAP access impact the SAP license count? Impact? What is it? Yeah, how does SAP access impact the okay. SAP uh, license okay. count? Okay, okay so, so what I'm saying is, so based on the audit, right, SAP could tell you, okay, you need to buy 1,000 more licenses or 2,000 more licenses. Uh, SAP only, SAP, let's say for example you bought 3,000 licenses, but you are using only 2,000, SAP will not negotiate with you. SAP will not say we'll reduce the license type, right, license count, unless there is a contract renewal or you are trying to buy HANA or something like that. But if you are use, bought 3,000, but you are using 4,250, SAP will automatically tell you to buy additional licenses. Okay. Did anyone have any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. As I mentioned, you will receive a copy of this chat. I hope you were able to download the handout. Um, Selva, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining everyone. Have a nice day.